everybody welcome back to the channel and happy mask monday friends and ladies collaboration day you guys i'm gonna keep going tree of laser and then i'm gonna do a sheet mask so i did my tree last night i'm gonna do it again today i did not charge it so i'm gonna see if i can get through the four zones without it dying we'll just i'll go either until i get the whole face done or until the battery dies then uh you all know i just I really love this mask. Um, I think this is a pretty good one to follow up after the Tria Laser. It's quite hydrating. It's um, from Esfolio. It's a snail essence mask. It says, enriched with snail secretion filtrate and uh, various nu nutritive components to deliver abundant moisture and nourishment deep into your skin. Um, yeah, I, you guys, you know I tend to try to use this quite a bit. So let's get into it yep i'm frying my face again like i said i did it last night um skin's a little dry and irritated i did do a pretty good scrub i was outside all day today i had um i had a physical sunscreen on which is you know like a mineral based sunscreen and that's that could be tough to get off so i melted it off in the shower with um Al uh, albaline and then did a did a nice scrub my face actually feels pretty good now but it's not gonna like <laughs> it's not gonna like the laser um i did a couple of sessions in a row last week on with the tree laser and then i let my uh face sit for like three days four days and now i'm back at it again um, i don't recommend if you do use these to use it every single day you just get too disruptive of your skin barrier and you can actually get into like real big trouble so i try to do two to three days and then leave my skin alone for three, four days. Um, sometimes I'll do it like two days on, two days off, two days on. It's just honestly, my schedule is really busy and I just, <laughs> I just do one whenever I think of it. So here we go. There it is. Full on intensity. Since I don't know how long this is going to last, I'm probably going to focus on doing both sides first try to um then probably my forehead and then i'll leave my like chin and neck area to the last part in case the battery doesn't last i have my mirror down here because i have a tendency if you don't hold this properly to your skin it shuts off and i have a tendency to kind of turn it and get get a little off kilter so sometimes it helps to just check in and then i can also see the redness develop on my face so i know like if i'm getting a little too crazy in one area and i'm missing an area um so it's a little hard to do the talking on this but so you guys you know one of the things we haven't talked about on this uh channel a whole lot and i think a lot of you are probably in the age bracket or will be approaching the age bracket or or you know in the midst of it or even beyond let's talk about just for a little bit um perimenopause and menopause right so <clears throat> i'm not a doctor i don't play one this is not meant to you know offer anything but like stories about my own exploration as i'm getting older um as well as what i've some information i found out just because you know i'm getting older and ladies you can't avoid it right so perimenopause can start in your 30s the thing is is like we don't know we don't know every, first of all everybody's different everybody's different it's a lot of genetics uh it can depend on your mom or your father's mother it can be very genetically linked right like if your mother started perimenopause early you could have a chance to start perimenopause early but it's just everybody's different right so perimenopause can start in your 30s early to mid 30s um, more than likely though, by the time you hit 40, uh, most women may not know it, but might be seeing the starts of perimenopause. So the problem is if women, you, you know, we're gaslit all the time by the medical profession, right? Like we're, we're, we're told, you know, we're just, we're seeing things. We don't believe it. We're just tired. We just, we're gaslit, right? um doctors don't necessarily and that's not all doctors but a lot of times doctors just don't know they don't want to believe us they don't understand what we're going through um and so they tend to be pretty dismissive but by the time you're 40 most women are starting perimenopause and it can just be subtle subtle things right you just you don't know um and it's hard to diagnose you know this is this is the lovely part of our bodies right it's really really hard to know um 
and they can't necessarily just run one blood test <laughs> to know, right? Um, but, you know, you might start seeing some changes here and there and, and all sorts of things. You might see your uh, changes in maybe your period, changes in um, maybe your hair. You, you're noticing your texture changes in your hair. Maybe you're noticing your hair is starting to thin. That's a really good one. That's a really good indicator. It sucks. Um, but, you know, little things start to change. And as you approach you know, your mid, mid forties, you're definitely going to be in perimenopause. You might even be going to starting actual menopause. So by the time you're 50, most women are in menopause or right there, knocking on the door, cracking it open, sticking your head in and saying, hi, I'm about ready to start. Right. So, um, you know, I'm kind of at that age where I know I've been in perimenopause for a while. I think I'm, I think I'm probably transitioning into uh, menopause, I would say about a year ago, it was kind of like total changes in my body. Like so many, I can't even explain it, but I actually, um, honestly, you know, with COVID and the medical profession kind of like, you know, a lot of doctors weren't seeing patients and stuff kind of had to go through a lot of this on my own, but I got really lucky. I, um, I found a women's physician's clinic that's um, doctors. They're basically OBGYN and physician's assistants that are practicing. But um, I think the majority of their practice is women who are either trying to get pregnant or pregnant, you know, that whole, you know, reproductive thing. But they do, they did finally add on several doctors who are specializing in the women's transitioning as they age, which is perimenopause and menopause. So anyway, I have been seeing a doctor and she's been really great. We've talked about all sorts of things. She's keeping an eye on my blood work. Um, one of the things, you know, they can do is check your hormones. Now, if you're on some sort of, um, you know, birth control or whatever, it may or may not, you know, tell you anything. But if you're on like a hormonal, I think a lot of women are on like marine IUD or whatever. If you're on any kind of hormones, it's not going to help like to figure that stuff out. But um, you, you can look into hormone replacement, things like that. But, um, you know, they also keep an eye on other, other basically markers in your blood. I don't know if a lot of women understand this, but when you transition perimenopause and menopause, you can actually, your cholesterol can, if you had normal cholesterol your whole life, you could turn around and not realize that your horm your, your, change in hormones can cause your cholesterol to go crazy, which is scary, right? Um, so anyway, I, I, I would strongly encourage you guys to consider seeking out a doctor who actually has training in perimenopause and menopause. And I will tell you for friends with doc that are doctors and stuff, they don't get training in, in medical school. They get a week, one week, one week where they talk about this, right? And you think, oh, OBGYNs, they get specialized training in this. Mm -mm, not really. Their, their sole training is really on the reproduction part of our life, right? Uh, so it takes a little bit to find somebody who actually is specializing in it. Look at you guys. I think I might get my whole face done before this thing dies. The battery isn't even, like, lighting up. Um, so anyway, you know... Not everybody can do hormone replacement. Not everybody will want to do hormone replacement. Not everybody can do hormone replacement. Um, you know, it can be a cancer trigger. If you have any sort of like cancer in your family histories and stuff, all that needs to be evaluated by the doctors. Considering the risks, they need to explain all that for you. Um, but, you know, we really need to find ways to fund more research into things like this for women. I mean... It, it's it's tough it was it really was a lot of work for me to try to find a doctor who even knew what i was talking about i'll tell you what my uh my primary physician not helpful uh not helpful at all clueless completely clueless trying to gaslight me like i knew more than she knew and that's just by doing my own research on the internet that doesn't mean like watching crazy videos and stuff but like I'll go out and research medical journals and medical art journal articles and stuff just to kind of get an idea of like what to expect. Right. I mean, I'm still not a medical professional, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I don't know. I would really like to hear you guys' discussion about um, where you are in your journey. If, you, if you'd like to share, um, 
you know, and the things that you're experiencing because women are not going to all experience the same thing. What I am experiencing, you might not experience. I might experience 10 things more than you do. You might experience 10 things more than I do. But like achy bones and joints and things, it's, <laughs> it's all a lot of that can be hormonally driven. And when you stop producing estrogen, um, perimenopausal and menopausal women are at huge risk for heart attacks. Our heart attack symptoms are not the same as men. So make sure you do a little research and you understand how a woman's heart attack will present. It's not at all the same as you. You hear about all this, you know, tingling in your left arm and all that. You guys, for women, it's totally different. Make sure you understand it so that if you experience any of those symptoms, you are aware. Yay! Um, you're aware and you seek medical attention and stuff. Um, anyway, that's... That's kind of my, I'm curious. I would really love to have more of a conversation with you guys on this stuff. So please feel free to talk about it in the comments. Um, love to hear it. Love to hear your thoughts. You know, not everybody's in perimenopause, menopause. I don't think I have a huge following of 20 year olds or early 30 year olds on my channel. Um, but yeah, I know some of you ladies are going to be right along in this journey, side me in this journey. Okay, here we go. Oh, it feels so good. It's cold feels amazing after that um yeah i'm just curious you know but they basically say if you're 50 or higher you're gonna definitely be in menopause it's pretty rare of course not everybody's the same there are those rare women who are 50 and who are still not in menopause but uh it's far and few between <laughs> but if you're in your late 40s you know perimenopause or menopause you could be in your mid 30s and you could be experiencing the first symptoms of perimenopause. So I actually stumbled upon a, um, a video the other night of a woman who, what is she? She was 44 and she was 21 days late on her period. And she had had her tubes tied, but her sister was a nurse and her sister was like, we get women in all the time who had their tubes tied who are pregnant. So she was freaking out and she's like, my gosh, I hope not, because they had already they had four kids and they were not looking. Obviously, she had her tube side. They were not looking to have to grow their family. Um, anyway, she did get an at-home pregnancy test, and guess what? She wasn't pregnant. She was. This was this is her first confrontation with the beginnings of menopause and perimenopause. So, um, all right, y'all. So let's touch base on. I did a giveaway. Um, I picked a winner last week for one of the two giveaways I had going on. And I got that, um, Jenna, Jenna was our winner for that one. She contacted me, I got her goodies out in the mail. Um, and that was kind of the, um, <laughs> I'll call it the, I felt really bad uh, about how YouTube handled the 2,500 um, subscriber um, level giveaway that I did. And like YouTube was terrible. I did, I felt so bad at the end of like picking the winner for that. I did kind of a, let's just try this again. Um, giveaway and then come to find out when I picked the winner for the 2,500 subscriber level giveaway that person never contacted me so the current giveaway that is running right now you guys is um the reset we'll call it of my um thank you so much for supporting me and helping me hit 2,500 subscribers um so that's going on I believe I have a little note here somewhere I think it it ends on the 12th, which is just a couple days away. So, especially when you guys see this on Monday. So make sure you track that video down and get entered if you want to, because like I said, we're real close to picking that winner. Um, I thought I would do another Mass Money Ladies giveaway, to, um, but I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and get that out of the way. And then next week, we'll just go ahead and start my regular Mass Monday Friends and Ladies weekly funness. I just don't want to have um, get myself confused. <laughs> So it's a big, because that is like the original 2,500 level subscriber giveaway, it's a big giveaway. Um, I do have like two bonus items on that. So basically, uh, whoever is picked as a winner wins like the main core of goodies. And then um, wh whoever I pick, if that person, when they contact me, lets me know what their, their handles are, if they're following me on Instagram and TikTok, there's um, bonus items for each of those. So if you follow me on Instagram, 
there's a bonus item for that. If you follow me on TikTok, there's a bonus item for that as well. Um, so it's not like you have to follow me on all of them. If you only follow me on Instagram, and you're not on TikTok, you could still win that, that Instagram um, bonus item. So um, I'm not asking anybody to leave their handles in the comments because I don't know if that's what triggered YouTube being horrible about that original video. I don't know what the deal was. Uh, so far, so good on, on the current giveaways. We didn't have any issues on the last one that I, I just picked a winner on a few days ago. So I don't know if it was referencing those social medias that um, produced the problems with their algorithm and why it was deleting all those things. But don't leave that information down in the comments, you guys, um, on that video. Because I'm guessing that that is what was triggering all the issues. So basically, when I, when I pick a winner, that winner is just going to have to let me know. Like in an email, okay? Because uh, we're just not going to go through that again with whatever YouTube's problem is. But all right, you guys, I don't need to keep you any longer than I had you. I hope you're having a great um, week. I had a long weekend. Uh, my sister-in-law and I went and saw my Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. Um, loved it. Been a fan of the first two. Was actually um, on two of the Greek islands when we went on our vacation earlier this year. Um, I've always loved those uh, movies. They're It's just fun to watch. Um, Anyway, she wanted to see it too. So it was opening weekend. We, we did an early movie on Saturday morning. It was a lot of fun and it was 30% off the sale, the price of tickets. So the theater wasn't totally empty, but it wasn't packed. You know, I think there was like six people other than us in the theater. So it was really nice. Uh, and then I've been working on fencing. Uh, it's kind of sad to say it's been so hot lately, but now we're going right into fall. And I need to get some stuff fixed before winter hits, which I can't even believe I'm saying winter, but uh, it's gonna come sooner than I, I'm ready for. So trying to get a jump on that. There's a lot of major repairs I needed to make. I just wasn't gonna do it this summer. It was so hot. Um, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of that this weekend. We still haven't had any rain. It's been about a month. Um, we are potentially going to be getting rain Sunday night into Monday. You guys are going to see this Monday. So I'm hoping that when this publishes, I'm hoping we will be getting some rain. I just, oh, please, please send us some rain. It's so bad, you guys. It's so bad. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys have a great week. Watch for that winter video. Make sure you hurry up and get entered in it because time's a tick and there's, there's not much time left to. But uh, yeah, I will. Oh, oh, and then I got my Cleona, y'all. Please check that video out. It's a little bit long. Oh, I'm so excited. I love it. I think I'm set on all my Cleona stuff. Um, you know, periodically I may have to like rebuy re like one or two shades, but I'm super, super happy with my purchase. Um, it's a long video. There's a bit of a story uh, about ordering it. You guys, make sure you... <laughs> It was it was an interesting situation. So um, it took almost it took six weeks or or more, maybe even eight now. And we might be at two month mark for me to actually get my stuff. But I'm not going to give away that information. You got to watch that video. So all right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Have a great one. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.